I felt like I was live like three seconds ago. Tom. <laughs> you were nobody, nothing else was just you. <laughs> Missed the cue. Okay, it's live. All the way live. Who are we missing? Michelle. Yeah. She's in. She's all over missing. Right now we're missing the mayor. Well, he'll be back, I'm sure. Hello, hello. Hi. You guys don't look too happy tonight. Is is it too cold or you want spring to come early or what, what's up? It's Long too day, sunny. Hard. Yeah, I understand that. Cliff, it's too sunny. Ah, well, that can go away at any time, you know. Right. We need some more snow. I need some more phone calls. Yeah, don't say that. Mr. Quarter, we're waiting for him. Will he be here? Jeff will not be on tonight. Okay. You been on again, Bob? I tore my bicep tendon. They reattached it on Friday. How'd you do that? Trying to list, list a 75 inch TV by myself. Oof. Couldn't have been from throwing a baseball very hard. It's probably an old baseball injury caused by overuse by my JV coach. <laughs> it could be. I was going to say, Greg would probably have a comment about baseball, too. <laughs> I can pull a muscle looking at a weight. <clears throat> all right, I have 6 o'clock. How's everyone doing this evening? Don't all speak at once. You're doing great. This is our committee meeting. Welcome uh, those who are watching via Zoom. And uh, this is our work session is what we call it. So we'll go to each uh, department, each uh, committee and see what's cooking. And we'll start first with the mayor. All right. Happy Monday. Like I always start out. Uh, it's been one of those days, just nonstop, just <laughs> like the weeks and the years. Uh, couple things committee uh, Cherry sent over to talk about was the uh, the farmland uh, the resolution the Finley and Jones family application uh, basically it's a technicality I don't know how many years we've been doing this but the farmland is actually within the city limits uh, I think we do it every five years and there's two or three of these within the city limits so I think it's more of a technicality. It's nothing new. It's just something that we have always done. Uh, ordinance uh, for the bids. I'm very excited to listen to Cherry say that uh, word that I can't say, uh, housekeeping bids. She told me, how do you say it, Cherry? Sodium hexametaphosphate. Okay, good. So yeah, that the housekeeping bids that we all heard her say last year, we're going to have to get that done again this year so we can accept bids for uh, housekeeping for uh, water treatment, uh, the plants and basically gasoline as well. A uh, couple things, if, additional things that I'd like to talk about. Uh, last year, we had some some uh, fire pit and fire burning issues. We never really got anywhere with it. Uh, came up with a new ordinance and I'll send that out to you 
for next meeting, basically just uh, setting standards for uh, fires. Uh, heard a fire call uh, this past week where a neighbor, a neighbor had called uh, about a fire in their neighborhood. So kind of want to nip this in the bud before fire season starts. Uh, don't want to get a, get away from them. Want people to enjoy their property, but also want people to do that in a safe, safe manner, uh, standardized, and just follow the rules. And also with that comes uh, enforcement by the fire department. So each shift of the fire, uh, all the captains know uh, what you know the regulations are. And I think this kind of spells it out. So we'll get that to you. Uh, also working on policy change for cleanup uh, as far as mowing and trash debris cleanup if the city uh, does it. Right now we're on a, on a 30 day. You have 30 days to mow or clean up. Uh, definitely want to be on a seven day mow and a 14 day cleanup schedule because sometimes I just can't wait 30 days. And if people have to live around high grass or trash, I don't want them waiting a month for something to get done. And right now that's where we're at. So I'd like to increase the price uh, of mowing and cleanup to $60 an hour. Uh, the administration charge of $50 stands and then if we clean up, it's a $150 dumping fee. I just think that we need to move quicker uh, on getting things cleaned up and mowed. I rode around for about three hours the other day with Max Crown and Jeff Quarter and see actually the, the major issue I see, and it's not a complicated one, is people putting their trash uh, in the trash toter, taking it to the curb to get picked up. Notice a lot of houses with can collections. That's great, drink all you want, have a good time. Keep your cans, save your cans, but take them to the scrap yard because no one wants to see a pile of, of cans in someone's backyard ripped open by animals. Uh, just, it creates infestations that we don't need. Uh, mattresses, I'm actually working. I, I think I'm going to work with a local business to provide plastic coverings for mattresses, couches, etc. We notice those. Trash will not take those unless they're covered. Uh, so I'm going to work in a way maybe that will benefit a local business to provide uh, plastic. If not, if I can't get that done, we're going to buy our own plastic and provide it to residents who are having a hard time understanding the policy. Uh, I think for the cost of it, it would definitely be worth the price to buy the plastic bags. It would just be getting people to put them in plastic. So I think if we give people an opportunity and try to help them, maybe they'll help us. And maybe they won't, just an idea. Uh, Started work on uh, Adopt the Road for litter. Uh, I don't know if you guys have saw that. It's a, if you adopt the road, it's eight, eight city blocks. What we'll do is we'll put up a sign like this. Uh, this is actually DNK Lawn Care and Landscaping uh, has volunteered. Uh, HER uh, Realty Downtown has uh, Carly, uh, Brent Mason, uh, Carly Rose. I have a lot, uh, Cambridge Road area at this time, and we just need help all over town. We do have what I call litter angels that go around and pick trash up. Uh, don't want any recognition for it. They just do it to, to keep our city beautiful. And I definitely appreciate those folks. Uh, we have in, in the past handed out trash bags to people who want to go pick up litter within our town. So we do everything we can to make the supplies accessible. Uh, I saw some naysayers on Facebook, you know, that every the, the street department should pick up trash. 
well, we can do that. But when you're driving through potholes and, you know, things are not fixed, I can send, we can send our guys out, but I think every hand, every person within our community has a hand in keeping it beautiful. Uh, it would be nice if people just didn't throw their trash out everywhere. Uh, and we could keep it clean, but you know, in today's world, it's, you know, who cares? Let's throw it out the window and, and someone else can deal with it. So I appreciate and applaud the businesses and individuals who want to volunteer to, you know, take, take it into their own hands to keep our city beautiful. And we need more of that. And people always ask, how can I help? And the best thing I can recommend is keep your, your you know, trash free and help your neighbor out. If, if, if there's a reason why people can't get their trash into their trash cans and out to the curb, uh, we would be willing as a city to do anything we can to help them get that out if they're, you know, if they're shut in or they're having an issue. I'm sure neighbors, uh, community organizations, whatever we need to do to uh, make that happen, we will make it ha happen. So if you need help with getting your trash out, let me know and I'll definitely, if I have to come to your house and personally do it, I'll, I'm not against that. So uh, we have some properties that we need to hand over to the land bank and get them out of the city's hands. Poplar Street, uh, talked to the fire department today. Poplar Street, we're probably going to need to amend that ordinance. Uh, the fire department for future, future use or possible future use would like to hang on to the 651 Poplar address. And I think it's a good idea being that it's so near to uh, the fire department. And we might have a, a future availability for other property on Poplar Street for expansion at the fire department. So I would ask that we amend that and not include the 651 Poplar Street. The fire department has agreed to take care of that lot and mow that lot. Uh, so I don't see any reason to send that to the land bank this time. Uh, me and Cherry are having conversations of the, the financial viability and stability of our city and we're getting in the contract time and I'll let her talk more about a plan that we've came up with just to control costs within our city in the future. So if anyone has any questions, I will definitely answer them at this time. Hey Mark, uh, could you explain a little bit about the, uh, ag the ag district uh, to the new guy here? Yeah, well, yeah, actually, I think I will let Cherry because I'm kind of, this is before me as well. So I'm kind of not in the loop. So uh, Cherry will be my spokesperson for the Ag District and, and explain. I think she can explain it better than I can. I redirect to Cherry. Okay. Thank you, Tom. So we have two, maybe three of these in the city. Um, this Finley Jones is one. Um, Sheets Tree Farm is another. And I'm thinking there's a third one, but it's not coming to me who it is. It's just basically a tax break on their property. It's being taxed as agriculture because they do use it for that. And it's a, it's a formality, it goes through us and then the county. Um, it, they, it only comes up like every five years. So I've only done it a couple of times in my almost 12 years here. Okay, thank you. I think, uh, if I might interrupt, I think the, the Jones, the Jones uh, uh, Finley one is the, along to the towpath, is that correct? That, that acreage there where they put corn in? Um, Someone, is that it, Cherry? Yeah, it's might get somewhere in the in the Lake Park area. Oh, it's near near the park. I'm not sure the exact location of, of this. Yeah, I know that's so I, can, I can hold up this map. Can y'all see this map? <laughs> it's this blue, it's this blue and this. 
yeah. Finley's Finley's plant that every year. Judy plants that every year, I think, along the towpath. From to towpath over to, uh, to 36. And 16, that Six. area right there. But that whole area so, I mean the, the ag district, is it it's just just on the uh, riverside. Well, there's a bottom land there right on the river, and then across 16 is, is the other the, the other large field. They don't normally plant along the river because they get it gets flooded so often. But that's another that's another plot that might be in the city. I you know, but I know Finley's have that property along with with uh, Jones. So those are the only two I'm aware of. It's a little over eight acres that's in the city. Hey, Terry, if you could uh, tomorrow, maybe send that out. Uh, just send a picture of it out uh, electronically to everyone. That way they know exactly where it's at. Okay, maybe I can get one further away that's easier to identify what we're looking at. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, the mayor? I Mark, have, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. On um, the adopt a road litter program, how does that work exactly if somebody's interested in more information? Sometimes I talk so much, I leave the important stuff out. Uh, so basically all they need to do is contact Jeff Quarter at jeff.quarter at cityofcashocton.com, send him an email, uh, sign up, and then we, as the city will order the signs. Uh, I think cost wise, we're at like under 60 bucks for two signs. So one will be placed at each, each end of the street at the city's cost. I figure that's the least we can do for a family or a company uh, who wants to be recognized. I would like to get, dig a little deeper into it at some point and get a lot of participation and then hand out awards on who keeps their eight blocks or 10 blocks of cleanest. So that's kind of future expansion of let's recognize, you know, the people who are taking care of our streets who are, you know, keeping things tight. So that's kind of long-term from that where I see it, see it heading. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. You from there? I have one more question. Uh, Mayor, is the dumpster still available down by the uh, sewage treatment plant? If uh, if a company picks up some large trash, so then to haul down, can they still go to that dumpster? Is it still there? Uh, I can let Max comment on that. I'm 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 sure it's there, but it's just we have to pay for it, so we're absorbing cost, and and I'm not sure how how what regulations we have set as far as just individuals or companies companies dumping there. So Max, if you want to comment on yeah. that, okay. Well, I mean, the purpose of the dumpster is for our people that we hire outside of our city workforce that <clears throat> go around and picks up mattresses and furniture and that kind of stuff. Uh, we've never already discussed using it for anything besides that, Mike. Uh, and we generally fill it up two to three times a year by just with right. what we go around and pick up. So um you know we pay uh, i think it's like 400 dollars every time we dump that um i guess we could explore that as maybe for this type of trash but we have dumpsters you know like at the city garage if people pick it up and leave the orange what i'd like to see is as we get into this program we buy the orange bags which stick out you know like we use on cleanup day and then my guys can see it when they drive by, throw it in the back of the pickup or the dump truck, and then take it down and put it at the city garage is probably a better place for that kind of material. Okay. Yeah, uh, Mayor, is there like a, is there a minimum? I know you're saying eight to 10 blocks, but is there, uh, if a smaller business wants to take a few streets, is there, are those available? Uh, or uh, are you locked into the eight to 10 blocks? At, at this point, we, the, the eight blocks came from a minimum just to do advertising, you know, to make it worthwhile. We just determined that eight, eight 
blocks was kind of where we were to spend the money on marketing and on signs. That's kind of, kind of where we were. So, I mean, if you think it's a, it's a, if you have any other ideas, I'm willing to entertain whatever. Just kind of something early morning, one morning we came up with just bang it. It was, you know, so whatever you think do to improve it, uh, I'm def I'm definitely have ideas that you guys may have to make it better to to do a street or however you think it should be done. I'm I'm definitely all all ears. Okay. Hey, Thanks. Mark, it's an extremely minor thing, but uh, along the state highways, it's about the highway. In town, I'd, I'd like to say adopt a street instead of adopt a road. Just semantics. It's actually, Glenn, it is going to be this street adopted by and then the organization. Yeah, so it is going to be adopt a street. Thank you. Anybody else? Just, we got to keep you happy, Glenn. So I yeah, named, renamed it that road. That's a that's the Shockton coming out of me. Street road, who cares? As long as it's cleaned up and litter free, I don't care what we call it. I wouldn't either. <laughs> okay, I assume that's a wrap, so we'll go to <laughs> service and safety director. I don't have a lot tonight, Cliff. Uh, we'll update on Westlake yet. Uh, our tie-ins up there have been moving along uh, more rapidly than we had anticipated. Uh, Hopefully we'll get them wrapped up uh, tomorrow. Um, I know it's been a hassle for some of the people having to do boil alerts, but as we go through new lines, obviously we have to do that. So uh, less like yeah, it's been very good to work with from that standpoint. And uh, I think that project's going well. The new meter installs by Corn Main will start the week of the 15th. So we'll see how many of those we can get done a week. Um, the, um, we hope to have, um, as you know, we're still running West Lake water through the pipes. So we, uh, hope to have that done, uh, by the end of the month where we'll be on Coshocton city water up there all the time. Uh, eighth and ninth street project, uh, for this summer, they're getting ready to start surveying again this week since the snow's off. So that project's moving along. We'll get it bid out and uh, hopefully Mike by fall sometime, all that will be done and grass growing and you'll never know he was there. So, and uh, Tucson will begin reclamation of the people's yards uh, in Westlake yet as the weather warms, we need to get it where it's not frosting at night. So the grass will grow. Some of the residents thought that that was on them to put their yards back. That's not the case. That's all entered into contract that will put everybody's yards back as good or better than they were. So uh, as far as streets, uh, we got several stormwater projects in process right now that we're working on. We're, I'm sure you've seen them out patching pavement from our nice weather that we've had. Um, we went to start uh, the street sweeper today and the batteries were dead on it. So they're charged up and uh, I believe Tony Maya got out this afternoon to begin that process. That's going to be a long process. If you look at our streets where we had to use some sand, which we never like to do, uh, there's plenty of it out there to sweep up. And then we're also getting ready to begin repainting crosswalks in town. Uh, the first ones we're going to do is up by the hospital where we, uh, repaved Loring Street up there. If you go by there, you'll, it really stands out because there's no crosswalk there. So we'll get that done. And that's about all I have, unless you guys have some questions. Max, uh, I just want to pass along at some guys that are involved in pickleball and they wanted me to thank you for not only the new courts at Hall Park, but also the ones behind uh, Kids America down by the baseball fields. Uh, they were really appreciative. And I know this come up, I think last meeting, but the property at the corner of Chestnut and the railroad with the junk RV and the other cars that sit along the side of, I don't know if that's Fifth Street or what that is. Uh, where are we on that? that, that uh, Jeff's been in contact with them. 
they've got and Mark, you may know the exact date. Uh, they have to add those out. I believe it's by the end of the month, don't they? Uh, actually, I worked, and me, Jeff, and the railroad worked uh, March 15th. They okay. will this D Day for those. They post a notice to them. They were actually from the previous uh, tenant from the shop that's down on Fifth Street there. So Jeff, uh, with along with the railroad, the railroad was great to work with. Uh, they tried to reach out to the owners of the vehicles uh, from what the numbers, the like, phone numbers they got from the previous owner. So on the 15th, those everything will be moved from that location. Great. And that may uh, fall into one of Cliff's ideas about the city having an impound lot because if they don't get rid of them, uh, that'd give us a chance to get rid of them for them, become our property, just like we are the, uh, the houses. So that might be something we want to consider uh, looking at. I know Cliff has brought that up a couple of times in the last few years of the city having its own impound lot. I don't know if that's going to be in Mark's front yard. Or you where. got any? <laughs> well, my front yard's not that big. I was going to see if you had any room in your yard. I might have. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the pickleball court. Yeah, and I, I should have given you a brief update on that area down there. Um, I'll be meeting with um, Ryan from the Soil and Water Conservation and uh, Dougal Wells in the morning. If you've been down that area, you've seen some track hose working. Um, I can't, it wasn't last year, but the year before we had massive amounts of flooding in that whole bottom. So we'd never seen before, <laughs> obviously with the money spent down there, we don't want to have that happen again. So as we got to looking, the drainage coming down Pleasant Valley drive, our hardware area, autumn healthcare, that goes into a large ditch that, uh, goes out to sixth street runs along clouds and then uh, goes under the road past the uh, pool shop and dumps at Jack Randall's bridge is where that outfall is. Uh, when we got to lookings that the levees that was on the sides of the ditch had been breached in at least half a dozen places. Uh, so we've been in there rebuilding those levees, uh, dredging that out. Klaus has been good to work with us. They've been, dredging out along their old landfill, which would be uh, east of our area that we own at Kids America and they're behind the meadows. So hopefully we'll get all that in uh, good shape down there and prevent that area from ever flooding again. So that's one of the things we've been working on. And one other thing I wanted to mention, um, you've probably seen the radar speed signs around town in different areas. Uh, those are not to try to beat the high score. Um, the way they work, uh, they, the batteries are good for about a week. We take them out. We download all the data. And I sent you some data today. I don't know if you all got a chance to look at it or not, just from Browns Lane, uh, which is one of our lower speed streets, actually. Uh, but that can show you what the data that they can provide and then angie is giving that data over to sheriff crawford and then they're using that you know for their duty sergeants to tell the road guys where to concentrate on so i think uh these are going to be a, a very valuable tool that we have to try to get people driving closer to the speed limits in town so and that's all i have hey max <laughs> uh since you men mentioned uh, browns lane forever uh, the driveway into Bueller's has a huge hole. It's going to damage tires. That's private property, right? Yep. Okay. Has anybody asked them to do something about that? Nope. I haven't personally. I don't go in that. No. I win the front entrance usually. So I guess I haven't noticed it to tell you the truth, but we can mention it to them. Just a thought. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, Law Director? No, I have nothing tonight unless there's questions. Do I have any questions for Bob? All right. Does the clerk have anything for us that we need to know? 
Um, yes. So on the Ag District resolution next week, we will have to have a hearing. Generally, we do those about 645 for 15 minutes before the council meeting. So is a six o'clock committee meeting still going to work for everyone or do we need to move that back? What say you, council? Probably need to move it back if we're going to go to 645. Up to you guys. Using we haven't been using the full hour anyway, have we? We have not. not no, we haven't. I say we keep it at six. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's all I have. Thank all you. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, anything for the uh, finance committee? Ordinance committee. No, hang on. If we're going to make a change to the. Uh, <laughs> property cleanup ordinance as far as mowing and trash. I don't have a problem with increasing fees, but I, I, are we collecting what we're charging now or is that going to taxes? Are we, are we getting any money back? I guess is my question. Who is that going to? Whose question is that going to? Whoever can answer it. I, I can answer. I can answer that about halfway. If we, we have collected, I don't know the specifics last year, but we have collected. And if, it doesn't get paid again it's put on the property so i mean it's to me it's i hear people you know uh different people property owners buyers uh you know if they if they buy a property it's uh it's it's on there i've had people complain but once again if people wake up in the morning and they do the right thing and they take care of what needs to be taken care of, they will never hear from us. And that's kind of the way I want this spring and summer to go. I want to get tough on it. I'm done dealing with it. And if you don't want to hear from us, do what you need to do as a property owner, as a, as a tenant, as a landlord, as any anyone living in this city. And, and yeah, I'll, uh, I can get Jeff to get those numbers out to you. But we definitely, we definitely get money back from it. Uh, you know, it's kind of something that we wish that we didn't even have to do, but it's just one of those things. So I'll, I'll get him to get you the number because he's, he's the one who has it. And, then, and tell you how much is just hanging out there uh, and, and go from there. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mark, Sherry, I you have anything? Sherry? Well and I can add to that, we do get the special assessment. When he bills those, you know, those come in and when um, those, it's called special assessment that goes on to the property tax. And we do usually get that. Um, I'm just looking up here on the system to see what we got last year, if I can tell real quickly. Um, but when the disbursements come through um, from the county two times a year, that's when we see, um, you know, that money's coming back, um, but we do. And I can, I can look up here too, to, um, to see what's here. It looked like last March 26, that's about when we would have received, um, cause I can tell where it's receded to $3,921 and 60 cents. Um, let me see if I can see on the second assessment, 4,374. Okay. So about thousand dollars do we know what our cost was i guess that's what i'm looking at i don't have again i don't have a problem in ray i don't care we charge them a thousand dollars but i just want to make sure we're not putting more in than we're getting back we're definitely putting more in than we're getting yeah. back it's not a money-making endeavor yeah. because a lot of the properties uh are you know may end up in tax foreclosure and, and the our assessments go away so i mean there's just no way to avoid that but um there's there's no way it's, it's just not a money-making endeavor, but it's probably an endeavor that the city should continue because, uh, you know, we're putting money into the community. I can say these are probably two of the highest assessments that I've seen in a, a very long time because we weren't as diligent as passing those on. They might send somebody out to mow, but I mean, Jerry, she's seen the list i mean the letter to the county auditor there's been oh my gosh a, several several names on it so 
yeah, to see that, that's that's more than I've I've ever have seen. So <clears throat> I, All right. Thanks. if council would like to, I am actually the one that bills it to the county. I could always copy you guys when I bill the county. And you could see. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Roger, do you think uh publicizing the properties that we go clean up and naming the owners of the properties would help. I mean, I'll, I'll go out and, you know. Well, we you know, they, they list delinquent taxes in the paper, so maybe we ought to. Maybe people well, start cleaning up. Right. Oh. And, and what, what gets me is uh, we have some property owners who think that we target them or <clears throat> We're out to get them, and I always say we're out to get everyone who's not doing the right thing. And this spring and summer, the way the things that are going on within the community and the direction that we're heading, we're going to crack the whip on this 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 spring and summer. I guarantee you. So if you have something, you have trash laying around, it's time to clean it up. Because if you don't clean it up, guess what? We'll clean it up for you, and we'll and you the bill, so don't be mad. Just clean it up. All right. Sounds, good. Sounds like the bill. The bill's in the mail. All right. <laughs> Sherry, you have some other things to add? I do. Um, well, first of all, you have the appropriations for tonight um, for the Local Cares Act, and then I'll probably be having some more. Um, you know, at least once a month, I know for the health department. So I'm just going to keep firing those off to you once I get the amount from Catherine. So I'll fire them off to you. Um, so, you know, because, you know, she has, um, I think, three grants right now that are coming in um, that she can use. So each time I told her it was just easier, we'll just appropriate as the money comes in and I'll just adjust the budget accordingly. Um, that way we're not over appropriating and um, increasing the budget more than we than we know what's actually coming in. Because quite frankly, I'm not sure if she'll ever be able to use all the, all the grant money in the time that's allotted. So we'll just keep um, going with it as it um, as coming in. Um, like Mark said, um, we actually met, um, I think sometime last month, I went over the general fund with him and some projections of where I see us headed with the general fund. Um, and I wanna get with you guys on that too. Um, I'll get you the spreadsheets and just working with that. I really wish we were in person. It would be so much easier to, to go over all this stuff with you. But one step that we are, are looking at, um, and I know several years ago, we had in the policy that new hires would come in at a lower rate. And somehow through the course of time, you know, that went away. I'm, I'm, I don't remember the reason. It was back pre-2015. Um, so I had brought to Mark and um, Max the thought of seeing where our general fund is headed, um, you know, 23, 24, you know, with our revenue is staying the same. It's pretty stagnant. It, our general fund revenue has consistently been right around 4.2 million. Um, I have on the spreadsheets that I'll get to you back to 17, but it even goes back even to 15, 16. We have stayed stagnant with our revenue. Pretty, I mean, there's some, you know, ebbs and flows, but nothing drastic. Um, but, you know, our expenses keep climbing. So one way I thought that we could um, kind of start to nip this in the bud is and get ourselves established is our wage ordinance. Now, what I'm looking at would be of April 1st and it would be for the non-bargaining. So any of those that are exempt from collective bargaining um, it's non-bargaining and it would be for any new hires or appointed positions that they would come in at 80% of the what the salary is right now. Because what's happened is, um, you know, you have a clerk who has worked 34 years in the position. A brand new employee comes in and how our, how our wage ordinance is established 
that new employee makes the exact same amount of money as that 30 year plus employee. So we need to start to get ourselves, you know, situated for knowing that our revenue is staying stagnant, but, you know, our expenses are growing. So, you know, it's going to take a while, you know, it could take nine or 10 years for this new employee to come in and to get to the point to where somebody's at. But I think that's pretty common, you know, even in the private sector, you don't come in and make the same money as the top dog. You, you know, you work your way up. So what I have here is um, the one ordinance, the ordinance typically always had the service director, um, any department heads, directors, where I thought we'll pull those out of there and just have this as the clerical type um, duties, um, executive assistant, property code investigator, the clerks, um, law directors, if there's new um, appointments there. But the main ones, the directors, the supervisors, um, the superintendents, those could be done and that wage established at the time of a new appointment or a new hire just like we already did with you, the utilities director, because our new utilities director came in at 85%. But you know, we have to be realistic to some of those upper management positions, those might have more of a negotiated rate. You know, you might not get somebody in at 80% less, but knowing that, or that having take a, a superintendent to less than what the union job pays. So there's gonna to have to be some fluctuation on that one. And those can be done at the time of hire or appointment. But in the meantime, I think it would be good for us to go ahead and get established for, you know, if there's a clerk in one particular office that, you know, retires after, you know, 30 years, her, her replacement, if there's a replacement hire is gonna come in at a lower rate and not at that exact same rate. So I'll go ahead and um, send this out to you. I think we'd like to try to get it on um, the agenda for um, the, I guess it would be the 22nd, and then just go ahead and establish the wage for 22, 23, and 24, which is just gonna be very minimal. And, um, but at least that gets us, you know, a start on getting control of our expenses because we don't have that many people we can cut. We've, we have faced this before, you know, you know, it's like you are getting to the point to where you raise revenue or you reduce your expenses. And this is just one start of how we can start to reduce um, some expenses when it comes to um, salaries. So if you have any questions I can answer or any thoughts, Finance Committee, is there any suggestions you have? Would you meet with the auditor and maybe go over some things? Setting up a scale? I know with um, teachers especially, they're, they're brought in at their starting level, BA level, for example, and then it's indexed out from there. So obviously a first-year teacher isn't going to make the same as a 30-year teacher, even though they may be teaching the same subject. So it sounds like we need to come up with some type of index that would help uh, specify what new employees would be making compared to what an experienced no. employee would make. It. Roger, Roger, and that's kind of what we're looking at, uh, not only for non-bargaining, but for bargaining is do some kind of step uh, instead of across the board, because all it's going to do is bankrupt the city when, you know, when you get this percent this year, this percent next year, and it compounds. I'm not saying that we don't want to treat our people right, but there's a limit to where we have this amount of money to pay and, and we can't bankrupt the city by saying we're going to give across the board this percent raise every year. So we're definitely, this is part of uh, the pre-bargaining, you know, with the unions, we're kind of getting our, uh, our non-bargaining tidied up and then kind of sticking with the same mentality going in with our with our bargaining units. So that's kind of where we're at is we, we, just, we need to do something now. Uh, we realize 
Uh, we see the forecast, the three to four year forecast. And unless we somehow figure out a way to increase the population of income taxpayers, we got to figure out a way to raise money. And the only other way to do that is to either raise taxes or to get rid of personnel within the city. It's our biggest cost. And I don't want to raise taxes, but at some point you are spending more than you're making and you know how that works. It doesn't work very good. So we're going to, we're, we've been, we're trying to get creative before we have to get really creative. And that's what we've been working on together as a team to try to, to try to get this, stop the bleeding now before it becomes a, wow, this is a huge problem. So that's, and I think once you see the numbers, you'll be like, yeah, we probably need to do something now. So. Any other comments? So Sharon, you want to bring this back in for a committee on the 22nd? Yeah, well, you know what? I would, I'm, my thought is I would like to, um, to email this out, let everybody, um, Take a look. Um, actually, if you have if you have a copy of the court current ordinance um, for the wages, um, it's just the positions um, less the um, service director, um, chief, income tax administrator, deputy auditor, public works director, the assistant director, utilities director, um, the supervisors and superintendents. That it leaves everybody else. And it's just, it's 80% um, for that first year. And then we're just still kind of kicking around what we think, you know, to establish for um, 20, 22, 23, and 24, but it's, it's gonna be very minimal. It has, it, it just has to be, you know, we've the last um, past three years and the time before that, you'll recall we made, you know, the equity adjustments um, because you know, the wages were frozen for quite some time and, you know, stuff, we had to do something to try to make, make up for it, but we can't keep having those kind of increases. It, we just won't sustain that at all. And, um, you know, I've, I've talked with, even if I can say I've, you know, I've met with Sheriff Crawford and, you know, I've, I've given him a heads up of, you know, cause his conduct at that contract's going to be um, expiring here at the end of this year. So, you know, we're going to have, you know, some tough decisions there on that, but um, when we get the information, but I mean, I do really th think, you know, establishing this at 80% for any new hires is, really something we should, you know, get act on as, as quickly as possible. Well, I'll defer to the finance committee chair. Is that something we want to look at for next, uh, next meeting? You there? Well, I, I, I don't know if that's me since Jackie's, she was the finance committee chair, I think. So I think it's Tom and me and I don't know if Chad, who, who else is on that committee? I don't have a problem. I think it's something to work out. And I'll try to get Sherry maybe some uh, examples from the educational community to see if it'll give us something to work off of. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good thing to do. Is, uh, Rogers, you, uh, Chad, and we haven't put anybody else on there. And I just assumed it'd be Tom since he... Yeah, move right up the, yeah, the chain there. Tom? Fine. Okay. Well, you know what, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and get the ordinance together and we'll send it out to you. And then you can make the decision if you would like to, to add it on to the agenda. Okay. That sounds Does that reasonable. work to do it that way? That sounds reasonable. Well, we can get something in place that works for you now and then just work from there. Uh, yeah. And if we have to amend the agenda down the road or the ordinance down the road, um, we can do it. But yeah. I get it in place now. Well, and that's why we thought we, you know, we wanted to pull off, like, I'll say the management or the directors, and those can be, 
those salaries adjusted at the time that they need because they're already set for you know here for 21 mm -hmm. um, but if there would be anything in the meantime like the director like the utilities director we did an ordinance right then and, and amended it so we can do we can do with those positions the same in the same manner but just these you know for the lack of a better word clerical um except for no no offense to the law directors so and bob might have some input on that um but um yeah that it could be modified at any time but at least right now it would be a start i mean i don't foresee any see anybody being hired um you know right away but i don't think it would hurt to go ahead and have it in place for if there would be a new hire in one of these type positions okay are there any uh, other uh, comments from any of the other committees? Anything you want to present tonight? All right, I have 648. Uh, we have a regular council at seven. If there's nothing else that any other committees have and our discussions are complete. I'll if I got a back. quick comment. All right. We just agreed that the, to have the public hearing uh, at six o'clock in a couple weeks. Because we never run late. 6.45. 6.45. Before council. Yeah, yeah, yeah 6.45. That would be a, a struggle if, if we go like this tonight. Well, maybe we can put the whip out there and cut it. Cut it short. <laughs> Fair maybe enough. Mark not talk so much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I there you talk. go. All those in favor? I'll take a week off. We'll have I'll to cut him down a little bit. All right, well, that's all we have tonight. We'll see you at 7. Right. Thank you.
How you doing, Sheriff? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Hey, Sheriff. Good evening. Hi, Sheriff. How are you doing? I'm good, Glenn. How are you? Very well. Good. Glad you can make it again. Yes, sir. Mr. Moore, will you lead us in the place tonight? Yes. Right here. Ready? Good evening. Today's date is March the 8th, 2021. The time now is 7 p.m. This is our regular council meeting. And I'm glad to have all of our Zoom viewers uh, join us. And we appreciate you uh, keeping up and coming along with us. I'm gonna ask uh, that the clerk will please call the roll. Gross. Here. Johnson. Here. Moore. Here. Andrews. Here. Barcroft. Here. Turner. Here. Mishler. Here. Our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Mr. Moore. Would you stand, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Gross will lead us in the invocation. Father God, we again thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to serve the city in this capacity. Lord, I pray, pray that you bless us and uh, keep us safe, and I pray this in your name. Amen. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Council, you may be seated. Ladies. Council should have received in their information email minutes for February 22nd, 2021. Do you have any questions, discussions, deletions, additions? Mishler, I move that the uh, minutes be approved as submitted. It's been moved to be approved. Is there a second? Johnson, second. Johnson seconds. Anything further? Clerk, please call the roll. Gross. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Barcroft? Yes. Turner? Yes. Mishler? Yes. Minutes have been approved February 22nd. Thank you very much. I'd ask the clerk, are there any public uh, input? Any I have emails? None. Okay. Are there any standing committee reports? Being none, we'll have the mayor's report. I really tonight just want to touch on what I spoke on at committee. Uh, the most important and already cleaned up, but I think ninety uh, percent of our community looks and the other 10% makes us look bad. So the 10%, the 9%, I applaud. Thank you for making our city look good, picking up your property, keeping it maintained. And I just want the other 10% to know uh, we're coming for you. So this is a direct shot, uh, spring and summer, mow your grass, pick your trash up. Uh, you can be poor, but it's no excuse to be dirty. So it's time to clean this city up. Uh, I think the sheriff's department's on board. They're doing a great, great job with traffic stops. Uh, we need to just improve the look of our community and that's really what we're gonna focus on. Wanna invite the community also, if you see something, say something. Uh, if you have a property code, junk car, trash, uh, any issue with a property, please reach out to Jeff Quarter at jeff.quarter at cityofcoshocton.com, uh, as well as you can log on cityofcoshocton.com and click uh, report a property code violation and you can do it right there. So any of you guys see anything, we have 65 miles of roadway within the city limits. Uh, we don't see everything every day. Uh, if I didn't have meetings, I could drive around and, and babysit people and tell them to pick their trash up. Uh, just want to invite the community as a whole to become involved in making this a community that you want to live in and looks pleasing. Uh, that's how we get other people to come here and just want to invite people to become part of the problem or part of the solution instead of part of the problem. So uh, I applaud the 90% out there that's, that's making things happen and the other 10%. Uh, you'll be hearing from us if you just don't do the right thing. We're not picking on any anyone. We're not out to get anyone. We're just here to make this a better community. And I invite everyone to get involved in that process. Any questions for the mayor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. City Safety and Service Director. I have nothing to further to add than what we discussed at committee, Cliff. Uh, one thing uh, I talked, I ended my talk on um, that we're beginning to uh, sweep streets this week. Uh, I'm sure everybody can see how much dirt's there from where the snow's melted off and the salt and the cinders and sand that we had to spread. Uh, if, if people on day shift could park their cars in their driveways if they can, it makes Tony Seleski's job much easier as he goes up and down the streets. So that's one thing I would ask is, uh, you know, this will be a two or three week process just to make one round around the, as the mayor mentioned, 65 miles of streets. So um, if they can kind of be cognizant of the fact that uh, the car's there, we can't get up against the curb. So if they could park in their driveway, I know it's not always possible, 
but um, it would help us out some. So um, I have nothing further unless you guys have some questions. Any questions for the service director? Thank you for that report. Law director's report? I have nothing this evening unless there's questions. Any questions for the law director? Sheriff's report. Good evening, everyone. I submitted my report. Hopefully everybody received those documents. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, other than that, um, I don't have anything to add. Any questions for the sheriff? Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. We'll have the auditor's report. Good evening. Um, I had emailed you your reports for February. So um, you should have the February um, um, cash statement ended February 26th and the bank report for um, the same date. You have detailed check report for February 3rd and the then and nows that go with it. There was one single um, um, detail, um, detailed check report on the 9th. We had to issue just a one-time check um, that they need it right away. And then a detailed check report and then announce for the 19th. If there's any questions I can answer, if not, they just need to be approved in the minutes. Any questions for the auditor? Commissioner, I move that the auditor's reports be approved and submitted. The move to accept, is there a second? Barcroft second. Ms. Barcroft second. Anything further? Clerk, call the roll. Gross. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Moore. <laughs> yes. Andrews. Yes. Barcroft. Yes. Turner. Yes. Mishler. Yes. That report is accepted. Thank you. Madam Clerk, are there any other reports that were sent in for the record? Yes, sir. Income tax was emailed March the 1st. The mayor's reports were emailed March the 1st and the property code investigator today, March the 8th. Let the minutes reflect that those reports have been accepted. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving right along. I haven't missed anybody. We'll get right into the ordinances. We have, uh, I understand, some to take their course tonight. I'd ask the clerk to read legislation 721, 7-21. Appropriations. You've heard the first reading of 7-21. Are there any questions, discussion, or any matter you'd like to speak on this? I will ask that this be passed emergency, please. I make a motion to suspend the rules and give it a second reading. Move to Gross suspend second. Give it a second, Mr. Johnson. Who seconds? Gross second. Mr. Gross second. Anything further? Clerk, call the roll. Gross. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Moore. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Barcroft. Yes. Turner. Yes. Nishler. Yes. I ask the clerk to give a second reading to 7 21. Appropriations. I heard the second reading of 7 21. Are there any questions or discussion? I'll make a motion we suspend the rules and give 7 21 a third reading. Move to suspend. Is there I'll a second? I'll second. This is Michelle. Michelle seconds. Ms. Anything further? Clerk, I ask you to call the roll. Gross. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Moore. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Barcroft. Yes. Turner. Yes. Mishler. Yes. I'd ask the clerk to give a third reading to 7 21. Appropriations. Heard third reading of 7 21. Are there any questions or discussion? Being on the question issue, you pass this ordinance. Clerk, call the roll. Gross. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Moore. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Barcroft. Yes. Turner. Yes. Mishler. Yes. 7 21 is adept. Adopted, I'm sorry, thank you. I ask the clerk to read first reading 8-21. 
An ordinance to rescind chapter 1109 Board of Zoning Appeals. This ordinance will take its course. First reading, I'd ask the clerk to read 9-21. An ordinance to amend the city of Coshocton codified ordinances, chapter 1107 Planning Commission. Yeah, that should really stop after that, I'm sorry. Okay, do we need to amend that? Should yeah. The record? Call the record. It had the old header, Bob. When In the end, the header doesn't really matter, but if you might want to make it clean, then simply yes, make a motion to amend and then we'll uh, make it clean for the next meeting. All right, is there a motion to amend? So moved. Mr. Mishler, second? Mr. No. Johnson, second? Yep. Her call the road. Gross. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Moore. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Barcroft. Yes. Turner. Yes. Nishler. Yes. Ordinance 9 21 is amended, and we'll take it up in the next session. I'll ask the clerk to read first reading 10 21. 10 21. Um, should we amend it first or after the first reading? Is this the one with the uh, Heimball lot? Uh, it does, you can do it either way. Okay, then I'll go ahead and read it. An ordinance to turn over ownership of five vacant lots owned by the city of Coshocton to the Coshocton County Land Reutilization Corporation. 10 21, my understanding, will take its course. I it do. We amend 10 21 by deleting uh, mm -hmm. 651 Poplar Street. Is that a motion? Yes. I'll no. second. <laughs> Michelle, second? Yes, please. Anything further? Kurt, call the roll. Gross. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Moore. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Barcroft. Yes. Turner. Yes. Mishler. Yes. 10 21, and my understanding is, is corrected, amended. Mm -hmm. Second reading. There was second reading, 5 21. An ordinance to amend the city of Coshocton codified ordinance 731 taxi cabs. And that will take us course also. Is there, is there any objection? Uh, not an objection, but a question. question. Uh, last meeting, we discussed whether there would be consideration for Amish and if it would be treated like everybody else. I'd like a clarification. Well, you're at clarification is there's no exceptions within the ordinance. So if they're operating within the city, um, higher as you know a car for hire then they should be paying for the the certificate the chances of us being able to police that uh, are going to be difficult um, but that's council's perusal whether or not you want to accept them out from the ordinance or require them to be part of the ordinance thank you bob uh, I think on that kind of an ordinance, I, I think it's going to police itself. I, I think the taxi cab is going to rat out everybody else. So I, I think it's just going to take care of itself. Anything else on 5-21? All right, this will take its course. That's all the legislation we have for tonight. Is there any old business? Any new business? Any communications from the administration? Any communications from council? I just had a couple quick positives. Um, I know uh, Mark and I talked about the softball facility eyesore at Lake Park 
uh, last year. And just an update on that, uh, Lake Park has leased the softball diamonds to Kids America. They're going to bring in tournaments over there, and it, it should really enhance uh, restaurant business, hotel business, and that building itself. Uh, Lake Park has taken care of the outside of the building with new siding, new roofs. Um, and we'll paint the bottom of it where the block is as soon as the weather permits. Kids America will be putting in new windows and uh, renovating the inside. So that facility will uh, blend right in with the rest of the park, and it really looks great. Uh, the second thing is the deacons committee from the Presbyterian Church is donating 42 hams uh, to the Salvation Army, and it'll be split between Salvation Army and Starkey Lawrence's church. Uh, for Easter. So I think that's a, a really nice gesture on uh, the Presbyterian Church's part. So thank you. All righty. Is there any other communication? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have one for tonight. It's bittersweet. But on March the 3rd, I submitted my resignation to the Coshocton City Council. I'm sorry. Let me back up. I attended my resignation from the Coshocton City Council as president, effective March 31st. It's not because anybody did anything or said anything. This is one of the most wonderful experiences I've ever had working with you fine people. After I got finished pastoring the church for 29 years, my wife had discussed for years, what will we do after that? I think I was put here to serve in many capacities, but mainly those who are down and downtrodden and those who are look and left behind. This is a tough moment for me because nine years of service, I've learned a whole lot from all of you. Not just those who have been with council before I came, but those of you who are new council members. We have a new administration and this is a bittersweet time so that will be effective until March 31st, and that will be my last time that I would sit as president of your council, but you have a great group of people, I have a lot of confidence in you. I'll be leaving the county, I'm going back to Licking County, where I first came in in 1983. And I'll be taking my wife and I, we're empty nest now, we've downsized, we sold our house in a short order, and I, it blew my mind. We kind of sped things up and what I needed to do but I think all is good in God's hands. And I wish all of you the best in what this city is doing. I have confidence in all of you. All of you are unique and special. You have your own twist. And my job was to kind of manage that. You're like racehorses. <laughs> when it comes time for you to run, I need to let you run. Mm -hmm. When it came time to pull the reins in a little bit, I pulled them in a little bit. That was my job, not to do your job, but to give you the opportunity to share with your constituents what was best for them and, and listen to them and make decisions based on that. So I'm only 36 miles away. I'm going back to Newark and I'm sure I'll be coming back through this way. So I wanna thank all of you tonight for your kind words when I lost loved ones, for your support for me, for your words that uh, sometimes were stiff, but, but honest and fair. And Jerry, you kept me in line. You kept nudging me from time to time. I forgot to read something and you did a wonderful job. I appreciate all of you. Bob, thank you for your leadership in the law that you always got right to the point to us and told us <laughs> what we can and can't do. But you council members have to make that decision. But you're always ready to tell us what we need to do, Bob. And I appreciate that based on what the law says. And I appreciate you very much. I enjoyed working with you, Cliff. Likewise. And I'm going to stop right there because uh, I don't want to do what I didn't want to do. So thank you. If there's no further business, a motion to adjourn. Cliff, it's been an honor to serve with you. God bless you. Thanks, Cliff. You've been thank a great you. leader and good luck. Thank you, Licking County Licking County's getting a good person. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thanks, Cliff. I wish um, my time would have been more in person with you than through a computer screen, but I appreciate all that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, Cliff. Thanks for everything, man. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's been an honor, Cliff. Thank you. God bless you.
Yes, appreciate all you've done for the city. God bless you. I I always appreciate your uh, your kind being and your words of wisdom uh, and being my voice of reason at some points. Because you know I'm never unreasonable, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I try to stand on that that foundation, and hopefully we right. left the city better than what we found it. But I know uh, you guys are going to do a great job and continue to do that and serve and keep him first. And whatever you do, don't give up. Don't ever, ever give up doing the, what's right. What are you first. going to do if we don't adjourn the meeting? <laughs> Well, you'll be sitting there talking to the guest of the wall back here because I'm getting ready to go get something to eat. <laughs> hey, Chris, Cliff, uh, this is Mike. If, if uh, everyone's okay with it, I'd like just to uh, pray for you uh, for good times ahead, for a for, uh, good life ahead for you and your wife, if, if it's okay with you. Mike, I never turned down a prayer. I, I would appreciate that. Okay. Well, Father God, we thank you for, for Cliff Bearer's leadership, Lord. We thank you for his life and for for and for what he's uh, what he's meant to to Shockton in in all these years, not only as a as a pastor but as a as a civic leader. Lord, we would just pray right now that you would bless him and his wife and his family in the days ahead. That you would give them good health and and safe passage wherever they go and whatever they do. Lord, again, as everyone has expressed, it's been an honor to to serve with Cliff. And uh, again, we thank you for his wisdom and all of his input, Lord. We pray again, blessings on them, and may you go before them. And we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mike. Thank you so very much. Is there a motion? Yes. I'll make We adjourn. Moved by Mr. Moore. Is there a second? I'll second, Kaylee. Second, Kaylee. <laughs> Anything further? Wait for it. Wait for it. Clerk, call the roll. Gross. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Moore. No. I mean, yes. <laughs> Andrew. Yes. Barcroft. Yes. Turner. Yes. Ms. Shore. Reluctantly, yes. Jerry, thank you. God bless you. We are adjourned. God bless you, folks. Good luck, Cliff. Good luck, Cliff. Good luck, Cliff. Thank you. <laughs>